He favors me. Long time promise. God favors me. And I speak to her. God favors me. Hey, Ma. Hey, Ma. Good morning. We're getting ready to go. We give God his due. May everybody have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. <laughs> Why are you waving your hands weird like that? <laughs> Ma said, give him praise. I heard yeah, that. That's what I said. That's why I'm going back. Well, I was. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> wanna, that's my cousin G, y'all. Okay. I want to run down to the Walmart that's mm -hmm. on Turkey, Turkey Lake, Turkey Lake Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, good morning, sister. I'm sorry. How you doing this morning? God oh, bless you. Thank you. The sermon today was to trust in God, and y'all know I stress that all the time on my platform that you have to just walk by faith and just believe and just trust in God that He's going to provide as long as you do the work. Because faith without works is dead. Ain't that right, Mom? Faith without works is dead. You can't. God's not just going to give it to you just because you want it. You got to work for it. But you have to have trust. You have to have faith, and you have to have obedience. Look at Miss Rents. Well, you and your cousin cheap, and y'all trying to find stuff on clearance. <laughs> like, we're not. I don't, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I just saw it. I was just like, I don't know. You have to pull it out and see. Oh, look at this. This is like a denim like type dress thing. I said, that's my alley. But it's too hot for that. I'm 45. I can't wear that. <laughs> well, gee, you don't look it. You don't. You look good. Y'all, how my cousin look good? <laughs> Y'all, we be trying to be styling and profiling <laughs> on a budget. Okay. I'm saying you don't have to spend a whole bunch of coins to be cute. Get that. We was Walmart kids. Walmart pay less. Okay. Uh, Grandma, baby. <laughs> I, ain't, I have. I didn't get my first pair of Nikes until I found that pair in Mom's closet. And I just got lucky. <laughs> and they weren't like the new version either. It was these white and green color Nikes. I wore the hell out them things. All because it was a name brand. You know how these kids are cruel. They'll pick on you because you don't have name brands and shit like that. I'm like, ugh. But I'm glad I grew up and knew better. Hmm. These are $14.99. These were like $12.96. 12 and that's all casual, casual. Super casual. Look at all this bucket. Mm. Hmm. Oh! But that's why I had said, I said, but I didn't know if it was like junior clearance. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with some of the junior stuff. Yeah. As long as they don't got... Make you look young, like a child. I know what you're saying. 
You got me, you right between that. Ooh, look at this uh, kimono. That's pretty. That look like a purple one I got at home. Nine dollars. Ain't bad now. Throw a shirt on up under that thing. You good to go. Durable 19th century text in tunes for the United States. The Philadelphia-born author and composer of this hymn was a popular Baptist preacher and educator who serves churches in Pennsylvania, New York City, Brooklyn, and Plainfield, New Jersey. Hmm. Nothing But the Blood has all the earmarks of a classic gospel song. It focuses on a single theme and hammers it home. Hmm. Yes. Lowry adapts a call response pattern and the stanzas that immediately engages the singer. Stanza one begins with a question. What can wash away yeah, my sins? Yes, yes. The answer is resounding and definitive. Well, Nothing yeah. but the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. This is followed by a second question. What can make me whole again? Once more, the answer is unequivocal. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Things of pardon, cleansing, atonement, and righteousness permeate the remaining stanzas. Heaven is the destination of many gospel songs, and this hymn, in its original form, continues this path. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Amen. Nothing but the blood. against 
whatever it is that we're going against, we just create more problems. We create more hell, more stress, more pain, more sorrow, all those things that we don't want that we ask God to remove from us. But because we won't be obedient to what He has placed on our hearts to do, then we suffer. We get the ultimate sacrifice. We swear by the next person next to us. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Do something that's what I tell my church. You know, when I said, you're so busy worrying about what everybody else's choice is. Mm -hmm. What is your choice? What, what do you think God wanted you to do? Because if you concentrate on what you need to do and help places that need to be helped, yep. then you you ain't that time to be worrying about what somebody else thinks. Exactly. You're going to tell them. I really don't care what you think. You know? <laughs> I don't know back home. On a pack books. Yeah, we're still waiting for other people to arrive. <laughs>